So, now we had our drugs, so we can proceed. And now it's Seth Hilbrand. Uh, talking about generating models in the keycard way. I always say in keycard key way. Uh, Seth is a member of the keycard core development team and the founder of keycard services corporation. Seth is also an IPC CIT certified design engineer with over two decades of experience in system design, manufacturing and testing. He has worked in both government and industry designing systems that meet critical functioning goals. Thank you. So first, an, an apology. I wasn't supposed to be giving this talk here today. Um, we, we had a last minute cancellation. So our ECAD and MCAD uh, speaker was uh, not able to get his visa. And uh, he told me um, two days ago. And so this, this talk is, uh, is going to focus on the how we can generate uh, generate models that you use for in integrating uh, M MCAD and ECAD. Hopefully, I'm going to kind of uh, fill, fill in those, uh, those gaps there. Uh, one other thing, uh, if you were trying the wireless earlier, it should be fixed now. Um, and if, uh, if you are, if you're not able to connect, the Palexco 2023 network is also available for you, and the password is Palexco 2023. Right, right. If you, yes, jo John suggested generating a new MAC address if you are, uh, if, if I, I'm not sure how to do that on my phone, so, uh, but technical support is available in the front row, so come on down. <laughs> so, what you have designed your circuit, you've come up, you've figured out which part you want to use, and it's the perfect part. The only problem is this perfect part doesn't exist in the KiCad library that is out there today. This is not a problem because generating your parts your footprints and your 3D models is something that KiCad can help you with and where it actually excels. So, so we can provide a lot of the tools that will get you from a data sheet to using this accurately and uh, well in your, uh, in your layout and 3D models. So in this case, we're going to talk specifically about this part that I happen to pull off DigiKey's website. Um, the, this is a, uh, a, vi a video switch, the Maxim uh, 4886, lovely muxer. Um, so first step, we need a footprint. Inside KiCad, I know everyone knows this already, but we have a footprint wizard that will let you very quickly and easily generate a lot of this. So what you, the first thing that you want to do if you're going to try to work with the footprint wizard is grab this, uh, this dimensional spec off the data sheet. And so this is a copy off the data sheet and then go into your footprint wizard and you get to just take those dimensions and populate them in. As you populate, the individual numbers within the footprint wizard, you'll see that footprint automatically update. And so in this case, it's a QFN42, which with a kind of interesting layout where you have four pins on the, uh, on the top and bottom sides and then 17 pins on the, uh, on the, on the vertical sides. This, we don't have this in KiCad library yet, but I'm going to show you how you can not only generate it for yourself, but you can generate it for the KiCad library as well so that we only have to go through this process one time and then everyone, everyone gets it. But first, if you're just making it for yourself, you go in the footprint wizard and you can build out a lot of this and this gets you a fairly standard KiCad footprint. As, as you can see, you get the pin one identification as well as uh, good standardized uh, standardized courtyard information and all of this comes into your own libraries uh, in your uh, in, in your in your project 
The KiCad footprint generator, on the other hand, is how KiCad itself, our librarians, generate these footprints. So we don't go out and ask people to draw all of the footprints in the KiCad library. The KiCad library has over 100,000 individual parts in it. And those are not all hand drawn because even if we could get all of those hand drawn, and we might have enough uh, user contrib contributions to actually generate all of that content, there is no way that we can check 100,000 contributions reliably. And so you'd end up with a lot of small little mistakes where you have something just a little bit off. Maybe the silk is just a little bit too close on, on some. Uh, on some parts to the mask or uh, or the standoff for the courtyard doesn't give you enough clearance for, uh, to the pads. And so all of these rules that we have set up in the KLC, in the KiCad library conventions, this document that uh, we're, we're talking about earlier, all of these rules have been encoded into this set of scripts called the KiCad footprint generator. And it allows for automation, allows for testing, and these generated footprints are uh, 7582 compliant. So, so this means that we can ensure that the footprints are generated to a level that meets in industry standards. And this is one of the reasons why the KiCad library, the KiCad footprint library, is, is really solid. If you compare it with some of the other uh, collections available out there, on the uh, on on the internet, the level of consistency and quality in the KiCad library is is quite is quite astounding. And this is how we do it: we use the KiCad footprint generator. So this lets you, first of all, extend your own footprints. So generate footprints for your needs, but also you get to contribute this back. So if you are so inclined giving back your scripting contribution to the rest of us then lets us leverage that uh, leverage that going forward and that's one of the one of the ways that we are able to build a larger larger library for everybody so how do we do this the first thing you need to do is you need to get the keycad footprint generator so you clone using git you can copy uh, you can copy that command off or you can just use um, you can download off, off GitLab the footprint generator information. Now, all of these slides are going to be uh, posted and, and available, so don't, don't worry about taking pictures here. You'll be able to copy it off the, uh, off the original. Then you set up the, uh, the, the requirements. So first, install Python. All of the footprint uh, generators are written in Python. Fairly straightforward language with uh, easy readability. So once you, once you start to see it, you can uh, you can use it for uh, for many things. Install Python and then run in your footprint generator Python three manage pi update dev packages and that's and this gets all of the requirements in there for you. For Linux users, you might need to install this uh, in, this VNV. So once we start, this is how long that it actually actually takes you to to do this. So you can pull it directly off, grab the generator, and it's going to go out to GitLab. It's going to get the entire history of the uh, entire history of the generator, download it, put it into a new directory called KiCad Footprint Generator. Once this gets set, we can uh, actually go out and generate a specific environment for the KiCad uh, for the KiCad footprint generator. So even with a slow internet, it takes a couple seconds. Go into the KiCad footprint generator web uh, directory. This is automatically generated for you. At that point, what we want to do is we want to make a place for the virtual environment, create the virtual environment, this happens very quickly. And then once we have the virtual environment created, we're going to activate it. Now you see at the beginning it says VNV. So now we have a virtual environment act activated and now I'm doing the update developer requirements. And this is going to, what it's going to do is it's going to go out, pull all of the requirements off the internet and build it into 
your uh, into your system. Not even the fastest machine here that is running off my laptop, so moves uh, moves very quickly. We are ready at this point to uh, to use this system now to generate the footprints. So that's all. That's all the setup there. That 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 amount of uh, that amount of typing. At this point, we need to go into the footprint generator. All of the footprints are parameterized. So everything about the footprint, the width of the individual, uh, the width of the individual pads, spacing between the pads, where where you move them around. What we've done is we've taken commonalities from the data sheet and we have unified them into a set of parameters that can accurately describe every QFN part out there. And by doing this, it lets you map those parameters from the data sheet. So there are common dimensions, comes from that 4886 uh, data sheet. We're going to grab those common dimensions and they simply get put directly into, uh, into this file. Now you're not going to want to type this all by yourself because I make mistakes when I'm typing that much. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab the example from the, uh, from the file that exists already in the footprint generator and modify each of those parameters to match what is in your, uh, what is in your data sheet. And you'll notice here, all of these parameters are English. They're very, they're very readable. So your body size, your nominal body size, what the tolerance is, all of these parameters are meant to, uh, are meant to map directly to what you see on, on the data sheet so that you, it's, it's clear how that, is, uh, how that is meant to work. Once you have that, then you can take that file, you save that, that file, and go directly into the uh, into the generator. So each of these scripts for different packages are slightly different. So a QFN generator is not going to be the exact same script. It's going to be similar, some of the same sorts of things, but it's not going to be the exact same script as uh, as a resistor uh, package or a or a capacitor package generator. But we run the generator, we tell it our new file. So this uh, QFN42 is a new file that we've created. And now inside of this package, we have our KiCad mod. And you see we've generated two of these files, right? We've generated a file that has the, uh, that has thermal vias in the exposed pad. And we have a file that does not have thermal vias in the exposed pad. Both of these are uh, different different use cases depending on how you want to, um, uh, how how you plan on using the footprint in in your circuit or the the, the requirements of the uh, individual package so this is our generated footprint it looks very similar you'll notice to the one that we generated using the wizard the footprint wizard at the ver at the very beginning this is on purpose our footprint wizard is meant to emulate what we are uh, generating in the scripting so that you can generate one or the other if you're doing a one-off. But in this case, now that you have those parameters saved in your in your QFN file, your QFN42 file, you can now make a merge request. So we check that the output 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 looks good. And then making the merge request, people get scared about this but it's really not that big of a deal. We've just edited the file and I'm gonna show you exactly what we want to do. We make, it, we make a new branch, you can see that's, that's one checkout. I'm adding the file to this and then I'm committing the file into the new branch and add a little comment there saying exactly what the commit did. Now I'm going to add where I want to put it. So in my, we cloned it earlier, so now I have a, I have a branch on my GitLab because I want to open a merge request from my GitLab, pull that down, and now I just push changes up to my GitLab. So real time here, this is how long it takes to, uh, to open a merge request. Done. Now it gives you a link, click on the link, and type in, and type in your data. Now you are a KiCad contributor. This is, this is how you 
give back to give back to the library. You make you make the footprint using our generator. And the nice thing about using the KiCad footprint generator is that it follows the KLC. Your contribution is automatically standards compliant. It's it's a it's it's a wonder it's a wonderful thing, and it makes sure that all of the footprints that you generate for your own boards all follow the same standards as well. So you don't have a mishmash uh, of of standards on your board. You say, all right, that's well and good, but what about three D models? How do they get built? Well, most of them are scripted as well. There are some. Right, will be hand drawn or whatnot. But if your 3D model has more than about two configurations, we script that because it's crazy to go in and redraw the exact same thing multiple times in uh, multiple times just to change the sizing or the number of pins or any of these other uh, configuration parameters. But wait, generating 3D models on the command line. Surely you can't be serious. I'm here to tell you that this is not any more difficult than what you just saw. How do we do this? Well, you have an option. If you don't want to go through all of the steps I'm about to show you, you can download a 3D cube model and just scale it. All right, this is how th this this is good enough if what you're trying to do is make sure that your parts fit within the box. So you can scale so here download a standard sized 3D uh, step cube, a meter by a meter and then and then use the scaling in the footprint properties and here you you scale it down so that uh, so that you divide a meter by the values you see and you get down to what the um, what the actual value of the body of your footprint is. You can kind of get pretty pretty close there. But it's not going to give you a pretty picture and it's not going to be something that you're really going to want to show in a presentation. You could go over to Snap EDA and look for your 3D model. This is a perfectly valid way. Snap EDA does lovely work with a lot of things. The friend of KiCad. However, here, we are looking for the 4886, and they don't have a 3D model. And you'll run into this many times, so they don't have a 3D model for this. And if you search around, you're not going to find a 3D model for the 4886, because it's not there. It doesn't exist right now. We need to build it. How are we going to build it? Well, exact same way that we did, th did this before. Slightly different steps, but just as easy. So you clone the 3D package generator, install the prerequisites, which is one command, pip install CAD query. That's going to pull down all of your prerequisites. And then if you want to look at it afterwards without pulling it into uh, KiCad or get an independent view, you know, FreeCAD is a lovely open source uh, project that will let you uh, view those files as well. So. First thing you want to do is you want to locate your model family. 3D models share a lot of things together. So the QFNs look exactly like the DFNs. They just have a few more pads on the other side. So QFNs and DFNs live in the exact same generator. So what you want to do is you want to look for your, uh, your model family. All the BGAs, it's a big family. They all live in the same thing. So once we, you clone, it in the exact same way, then you open up the parameters in there. You can see here, this parameters file is in the QFN packages directory. So I found, I found the, the directory that I wanted, and I'm gonna pull out the, the file that says CQ packages. I'm gonna copy one of the elements from there, and I'm gonna paste it down underneath, and I'm gonna modify exactly what I want to have in there. Now this generator, um, was built a little bit earlier, so our variables are a little more terse. However, we comment each of them. So this is why you want to copy it from the, so C, the C variable is going to give you your pin thickness. The L variable is going to be the, the flat part of the pin 
length. Uh, the, these sorts of things are uh, are explained in the comments, and so you want to you want to use the comments from a, from a previous one. Modify each of these variables to fit the data sheet again, and again we're pulling out common variables that you're going to find in your data sheet. You just need to look at the individual models. The 3D model output, the naming follows 7382 standards. So you'll want to, if you look um, down at the bottom, you'll, you'll be able to set a name here to, of what the output generation is going to be. And that name is going to, is called out. So you can, you can Google, uh, uh, 7352 naming standards and it basically is length width height if the height is a uh, non-standard the number of pins exposed package it has all of the different parameters in encoded in the name and our generators are going to output uh, VRML files as well as uh, step files step files are going to have exact dimensions and the colors are a little bit close uh, VRML files are going to have much better coloring and the uh, the actual uh, dimensions you can't really import VRML files into other CAD programs so uh, in order to do this generating the 3d models is again now one command from the top so we have generator.py tell it where we want to put the output which library we want to generate it for and the um, oh, I I see that I've I've duplicated uh, output dir twice here. You really only need to put it down once, um, and then which which package you want. Uh, so the the library name you can see that's QFN packages, right? That's the directory that I pulled it out of, and then uh, the model Model is kind of hidden behind there, so so I'm uh, the model is QFN42. So the the name of the uh, of of the package in the parameters file. So how do we do this again? Very quick, super easy. We make a directory for the output, but we want to have a, a couple down down in there. So output packages, and then once once we do that, we run the generator. Output, specify where we want it. Not a problem. Now, which library are we pulling it from? We're pulling it from the QFN packages library. And then, which package in the QFN? Well, we want QFN42, which is the name that we gave it. And that's all there is to it. Generates like that. Now, we want to double check to make sure that this looks right. So we're going to run FreeCAD, open up the model in FreeCAD, and see that this is exactly what we what we want. So there's our generator, FreeCAD should start up here. Come on, FreeCAD. Okay, good. And this now is our, our 3D part. So you can see all of the individual pins, the exposed package has all been generated, as well as the, uh, as well as the outside package. This is what, what we wanted. Now, we not only have the step file and the VRML file that we can put into the KeyCAD packages, but you can open a merge request for the script as well. And merge requests for the script are exactly what we we love to see those because those are super easy for us to check and verify that they're that they're accurate. And then last step, open up your footprint, put the 3D model on it, make sure everything lines up. In this case, solid. Um, you want to have any questions on 3D modeling and uh, generation in in KiKet. I have a warning. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't do the scaled cube thing. Mm. Because if you export a step from that, the scaling doesn't stick with the with the No, export. we do that we do the scaling in step now. The, Wayne talked about all the step improvements we put in. The, that that's an old bug. All right, cool. There you go. Probably a, a, a silly novice question, but is there a reason we that the wizard doesn't generate the compliant footprints and then have a button to submit? 
Oh, to submit a merge request from the footprint wizard. Within KeyKit, right. Hmm. No one's asked for it? Okay. Um, uh, th so uh, that, that's kind of a, a flippant answer. Um, so offhand, th there are a couple things that, you, that I, I did gloss over that you need in order to submit a merge request. You need a GitLab user account. Uh, so that's first, first and foremost. You need a GitLab user account, uh, which is super easy to make. You go on to gitlab.com and click, you know, make, make user account. It's like that. Um, there is, so we, we don't have an exact mapping between the, uh, the parameters in the footprint generator script and the footprint wizard. Now, that doesn't mean that that can't be made. It certainly could be made, and that would, uh, I, I think that would be definitely useful for uh, the librarians or, or new, new library contributors. Um, that's a, a, an interesting request, and I, I would like to think more about that. Thank you. So this is a question for you or maybe Clement, but, um, when I, as a user, go to submit a uh, auto-generated footprint merge request, can I just submit the auto-generated footprint YAML file, or do I also need to open other merge requests in other repositories? Excellent question. Um, at, at the moment, we like you to open merge requests for the output as well as the script, and hopefully, in the future, we will have the output automatically generated and uh, and pushed into the uh, in into the respective repositories where, where where that is. But at the moment, yes, you 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 can open the the merge request for the script change, and you will be you will be asked for. Uh, the just a, a link to the merge request for the uh, for the for the footprint as well, uh, which you'll want to have anyways because you're going to want to put that in the correct directory um, in in order to access it. Merge requests for the footprint repository are just as easy as uh, the uh, ones I showed here. Um. Uh... Are there plans, any uh, guidelines on how to do the merge request, you know, not in a specific uh, uh, branch uh, where you are able to do so with permissions and all that stuff? So if I understand the question, it, uh, are there any uh, requirements of which branch you need to use in order to, so the, uh, the only requirement which is kind of a technical requirement on GitLab's uh, part, is that you not do it from the main branch. So you can name your branch whatever you like. So in this, in this case, I, I named it uh, QFN42. Uh, so name it whatever, whatever you like, as long as it isn't main. Uh, and that's just because uh, GitLab doesn't like to merge main into main. There's, uh, there are restrictions on the permissions. Um, for what we are able to do in order in order to get that uh, main yeah in order to get the <laughs> so your main branch is protected GitLab allows us to make modifications to a non main branch in your repository when you open a merge request and we have to be able to do that in order to update it to whatever the current branch is in the uh, in the keycat account so name it new part one new part two new part three very creative names will will work just fine or descriptive names we don't actually look at the branch uh, the, the branch name the most important part when you're making that merge request is to put some uh, pictures in showing the output so that when people are reviewing it they can look and see what the uh, what the part is, you know what the output looks like and verify that against the data sheet. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of it. Also, 
don't merge from other branches into the branch you're doing a merge request on. If we can't rebase it, we can't merge it. It has to be able to re be rebased on top of the upstream master. So if your branch is full of merges from other branches, it won't be rebasable and we won't be able to merge it. Oh, state. oh, okay, yes, yes. No, John, John is bringing up an, an important point. Um, what you saw me do in this presentation was starting from I cloned the branch directly and then made my, the sub branch off of that main uh, off off of the main branch in in the repository. You always want to make your branch off the main branch, um, and that will prevent a lot of headache. Yes, that's good. That's that's a good point. I think Frank has a, a question in the back. Uh, just before you submit that 3D model, your pin indicator is in the wrong corner. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. All right. Um, Good call. So, yes. Uh, so, this is why the pictures are really good. Um, a really, really good idea. Yes. The, so, in, in this case, um, Frank is pointing out that uh, this is rotated improperly. Uh, so, if you go back to um, this parameters file here, down at the bottom, there's another parameter that says rotation. Rotation right now is set to zero. You open up the picture and put it in there, and you're like, hmm, oh, that looks weird. The uh, pin indicator is supposed to be in the other corner. You change, change, the, uh, change the rotation. Um, 180 degrees, it should be fine. Uh, the other question is the footprint generator script and the wizard. Is there any plan to kind of unify those at some point to kind of use the, the generator script behind mm -hmm. the scenes? Yes, and uh, so right now the wizard runs its own script and we've kind of we have unified those those outputs but it does work within the context of KiCad itself and the generator works outside of KiCad it's just a python script plans to unify those yes we do have plans to unify those the caveat the and part of that is that it does depend on Python, whose future is shaky, uncertain, maybe. Um, it, Python causes a lot of, of problems, and different operating systems uh, have been locking down the availability of Python in different ways, and so its long-term future in KiCad is uncertain. And so if and when that does change, uh, all of the parameter files we are keeping. And, and so sharing the parameter files between the wizard and the, um, and, and the generator is, a, uh, is an important first step for us. Um, but uh, whether or not the actual, uh, the actual Python script is going to be shared. That is um, that is, that 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 part is is less certain. But there are there are many more Python generator scripts than there are wizard generator scripts, and we do want to close that gap and bring them together. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh.